Hey guys, today we're gonna play a game of Parent Trap on the blog, but instead of reuniting divorced parents, we're instead gonna unite two of my favorite platforms on the entire internet, ConvertKit and Squarespace. So a lot of you guys might be using or want to be using the lead boxes functionality that lead pages gives you. It's a great way to do a two-step opt-in that really bumps up your conversion rates without looking like the desperate freshman at a frat party. Unfortunately, if you're only using lead pages for the lead box functionality like I was a year ago, the $37 a month price point can get a little bit pricey. So today I want to show you a free easy and replicable, replicable way to link the two platforms so that you can get your blog converting like you know it should be. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna link up ConvertKit and Squarespace so that you can use a unique content upgrade anywhere on your site or anywhere in a blog post. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to get set on the convert kit side of things. So we're going to create a new form and we're going to choose that we want to create a form and not a landing page. Now the style is up to you. So you can choose the naked form. You can choose a form of the photo. Here we're just going to use the simple contact form. Okay. And again, here, this is just like in ConvertKit, you can do all the customizations that you normally do. Now, the area where we need to be careful is when we come into settings. So when we come into settings, again, you'll set it up just like a regular contact form that you're inserting at the bottom of your post. When we come down here, we're going to take a look at the style. And this is going to be the place where we can make big changes. So... Again, you can choose whatever form style you're looking for. And then the display setting is going to be the most important thing. So what we're looking for is we want a modal display form. And since we're going to use a link to trigger this, we don't want it to pop up before we're ready. So in this case, we're going to change the timing and we're going to change it. And you can put a really, really high number like 99999 in here. That way, if somebody has your website open for 27 days, they might see this pop up errantly. Otherwise, you're going to be in pretty good shape. So that's one setting we need to be sure that we've changed. The next setting that we need to be sure to change is this display setting. So we want to show it on all dis devices and we, uh, we, we want a visitor to be able to see it time after time. They're going to be clicking on a link to get it. They want to see this, so we don't want to try to hide it from them. And so what we'll do is we'll just change this 15 days and we're going to change it to zero days. And then finally, for return visitors who have already subscribed, maybe they've already subscribed, but they lost their download and they want to download it again. That's totally fine. We're just going to let them continue to show the form. So what we're going to do here is we're going to save our form. And now we're going to move on to taking a look at embedding the form. So again, here we're just going to use one line of JavaScript that we can embed into Squarespace. And so we'll go ahead and highlight this and copy it. And now let's come over to Squarespace. So now we've got a demo post open. We're going to edit our post and we're going to insert a code block. So we're going to look at all of our blocks. We're going to come down to more and we're going to insert a code block. We'll delete what they've got so far. And then we're going to paste in the script that Squarespace gave us. Now we're going to get a warning that it's embedded. We're not going to worry about that. Um, so we'll embed the script. Now what we have to do is we have to create the link that people can click. So we've got the form embedded on the page, but now we have to find a way to trigger it. And for that, we're going to use just a couple lines of HTML. Now, all we've got here, and I'm going to paste it here. There's instructions in the comments or in the description of the video to get this code so you can copy and paste it yourself. Um, but all we're going to do here is we're creating a couple of divs, a couple of uh, places that we can style so that we're inserting this block in a way that we can work with it. And then we're using this relative linking structure. This comes straight from ConvertKit. It's going to play nicely with the uh, JavaScript code that we've already pasted in. 
Last thing we've got here is we've got our button text. So this is where you can change it and you can say, you know, something like download now. Whatever you want that button to say, that's where you're going to change the text. Cool. We'll hit apply. We'll save. And when we click on it, we have to be careful now because um, we're getting an embedded script warning. So we're not going to be able to see what it truly looks like. But to get rid of that, we just need to do a quick refresh. We lose the embedded script warning and we can click on it to see that our Squarespace or our convert kit box is going to pop up just as we've intended. Now we've got the functionality here, but it doesn't look great. It looks like just a regular text link. It's hard to even know it's a link. So what the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to use some CSS to um, style this area. So we've got those uh, classes that we put in in the code um, and we're going to use some CSS to make this look beautiful. So here we'll go into the design menu. We'll come into our custom CSS. And we're going to start uh, on a blank line. Now here, I'm going to copy and paste in some basic CSS. This is going to be um, CSS that you can change um, to make your buttons look however you want them to. So we've got our container, and this is just saying that our text is going to be centered. It's going to have a certain line height. And then we've got our button parameters. So we're saying that we're working with a black background. We want our text to be white. We want those nice spaces between the letters. I've got the font family. Display inline block. This is a good one. Just keep it there. And then our padding tells us how much space we've got all around our text. Now, if you're not comfortable with CSS, you can have a designer or a developer help you make this exactly how you want it to look like. Or you can just use our, our simple black um, box. Again, to get this code, you're just going to go into the description and we've got instructions there for you to download um, all of this code that you're going to need to insert. Now, the great thing about the CSS is the CSS is one and done. So the next time that you want to create another box, you will need to use the new script from ConvertKit. You're going to need to use um, the same uh, code that we pasted in into a code block. But as long as you're using, if you want the box to look the same, you can just leave the CSS intact and it will style your box for you. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, we'd love it if you can hit subscribe or let us know in the comments. Um, and we'd love for you to tell us in the comments what's another way that we can support you. What's something you've always wanted to know? Um, and how can we show you how to do that? Thanks, guys.